her desperate gambit. That's the focus of tonight's angle. Now, the Biden-Harris administration, we all know, drove up inflation by just throwing the brakes on the energy industry and then borrowing and printing and spending trillions of dollars for climate boondoggles and handing out COVID cash. All of this was unnecessary and destructive, and all of it caused by the federal government under Biden and Harris. They were going to help us, right? And now, in a naked effort to buy votes, Kamala Harris is proposing more spending and more government intervention. While we work on the housing shortage, my administration will provide first-time home buyers with $25,000 to help with the down payment on a new home. Of course, this is a nightmarish idea, which will only result in higher housing costs as more people rush into the housing market. It's just another artificial sugar high created by printing our borrowing money. And yet somehow they expect a different result? Look, when it comes to the 25K, I mean, you just added $25,000 into every price in, in, in uh, under every home price in the country. Because if you're giving that away essentially for free, people will add it into the price. And Today's speech didn't sound like it was written by a winning campaign led by a confident candidate with a clear philosophy or even a coherent argument. And sorry, it was in no way reminiscent of Barack Obama. But it, it did remind me of this. Except at least Oprah paid for the stuff that she gave away or her sponsors did. But in this case, the regular working stiffs will end up paying through the nose. All due to Harris's manipulation of the housing market. And it's purely to squeeze votes from desperate people. So this economic speech, when you really listen to it, and if you didn't, I did, so don't worry about it. It's kind of a grab bag. A few of Trump's ideas thrown in, which is hilarious. Some phony winks to deregulation, even to some lower taxes. No one believes that. But mostly, it seemed like it was cobbled together by left-wing think tanks and the squad. And let's face it, their ideas, like price controls, they've been batted around and rejected by sensible people for decades. As president, I will take on the high costs that matter most to most Americans, like the cost of food. I will go after the bad actors. And I will work to pass the first ever federal ban on pr price gauging on food. Well, she gagged on the word gauge, or is it gouge? Who knows? We're all gagging, Kamala. Now, I hope all of you enjoy waiting in line, because we have a preview of life under the policies that Kamala Harris announced today, or rather, price controls, of course, with special benefits that are doled out according to different groups that are designated as worthy by the government. магазинах там вырезка допустим вот ее просто не было вот соответственно вот в этих вот распределителях так называемых там можно было купить то же мясо по государственной цене но естественно лучшего качества oh, that takes me back and if controls on groceries work so well and you see how well they work i guess we should have them on gasoline too for millions of Americans, this may be the worst weekend they've ever faced for finding gasoline to give them the automobile freedom they take as their due. For those of you who've been spared the experience so far, we want to share the emotions Americans are feeling on the gas lines. People are very desperate. They depend an awful lot upon their cars. I'm here since 5 in the morning. I spend every day three hours on the line. I am always nervous about gas. And speaking about a gas, no matter how they tried to dress up this economic speech today, one thing is clear. It told us that Kamala's honeymoon is likely out of gas. The momentum that was being fueled mostly by media sycophants and an army of paid influencers, it seems to have plateaued. Trump and Vance are everywhere, answering questions from anyone, including a hostile press. Nate Silver is noting that a second straight date of gains for Trump with some mediocre polling for Harris. Her lead in the national polling average is down to 2.4 points from a peak of 3.1.
It's too early to say whether there's been some turn in momentum, he says, or if it's just some statistical noise. But in any event, Harris will have a chance to refresh her momentum at the DNC next week. But the vibes aren't as good as they were a week ago. And by the way, we have some fascinating analysis on the new polling just out tonight coming later up in the show, later on the show. Including, by the way, we just saw this, a second poll of the day showing that Kamala's losing ground and Trump is winning in Pennsylvania. But it's hard to believe that in their internal trend lines, things were looking strong over at the Harris campaign. Because if they felt they needed to shake things up, then it can't be all rosy. And tonight, we know they're moving hard left. I think Kamala should just change her last name at this point to Sanders, because Bernie is thrilled. He's calling the plan bold and popular. Yet, as happy as he and the squad are that the anti-capitalist, pro-socialist dreams are coming true, the risk to the Democrat incumbents in tight Senate races, it's real tonight. Because instead of talking about Kamala's good vibes, they have to defend price controls? What was interesting to me today in seeing this plan is that it's clearly very progressive. Regardless of what she's saying to donors behind closed doors, she is putting a progressive bent to her campaign at this point. And that's not what a lot of people expected or hoped to see. I've been talking to moderate Democrats who said she could just run a vibes campaign. She didn't have to get into policy details at all. If you're a moderate Democrat, you're going to sleep tonight realizing that your party has become hardcore socialist on economic issues. Right now, AOC has more influence on policy than Mark Warner. Pennsylvania Senator Bob Casey sounded like a bumbling fool when he was asked for his take on price controls. The companies that are, that are producing food and the companies that are, that are manufacturing household items, that's where the price gouging has taken place. Go after them uh, and you use price gouging legislation to do that and to give the Federal Trade Commission power it does not have right now. I mean, Willie Geis is looking at him going, well, <laughs> GOP challenger Dave McCormick, he's going to go to town on that in Pennsylvania. Even the liberal Atlantic had to admit that Kamala's shtick today was economically dumb and made no sense to people acquainted with supply and demand, but that it may attract some support. And there was this uncomfortable moment for the morning anchors over at CNN. We've seen this kind of thing tried in lots of other countries before, Venezuela, Argentina, the Soviet Union, et cetera. It leads to shortages. It leads to black markets, um, you know, plenty of uncertainty. Might actually increase prices. Oh, of course it will. It'll drive up inflation. This is an unserious economic plan put forward by an unserious candidate. And by the way, this is why you don't skip over primaries because they have a way of weeding out the most extreme and the most inexperienced candidates out there. That's what happened with her in 2019. So you love his style, you hate his style. Donald Trump doesn't need to manufacture good vibes. He doesn't need to unveil a slate of incongruent ideas. He has a proven track record of success that was built on nine years of effort. But Harris's support, I think it's more like Biden's. They didn't really love Biden in 2020, and they don't really love her. They just want to defeat Trump. Remember that Biden used to have vibes on his side as well. Do you remember Dark Brandon? Do you remember the ice cream stops at the ice cream shops? But once he fell behind and the post-debate reality set in, his support melted away, and then came the coup. So what will Harris's campaign look like if she falls behind, which some signs show that she's already doing? How will she handle this adversity? That's what Democrats should be worried about tonight. And that's the end. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.